good morning one and all gathering i am very glad to welcome the gathering in the name of almighty most respected chairman of this esteemed institution management principal and academic advisor vice principal i am very happy to welcome the resource person of the day professor dr j jayvardi ma'am professor and director cipr anam university and also i welcome every one of the participant welcome you all now i hand over the time to professor jayvardi please ma'am So I'm screening this system now. Madam, screen is visible now, but full screen is not visible. Yes, yes ma'am. Full slide, so ma'am. Yes, I need. You can start uh, full screen. Yes, ma'am. Shared means. We have shared, no, ma'am. No, uh, slide show yes. not yet begin, ma'am. Slide show. Ah, yes, ma'am. You can start over, ma'am. Please. Hello, sir. Hello. Ah, yes, ma'am. Visible, ma'am. You can start over, ma'am. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, I didn't have a full screen, sir. Um, fifth option is there, ma'am. Slide show. Yes. Which is not active here, sir. No issue, ma'am. Yeah, press F five, ma'am, from the keypad. F five. In the first row, it is uh, visible, ma'am. F five, sir. Seven. F five, yes, ma'am. Same. Tilaga.
sharing over there. Yes, ma'am. Your screen shared, ma'am. Now we can go to the slideshow part, ma'am. How to minimize this one? PowerPoint. Minimize, minimize, ma'am. Which one, sir? The screen. PowerPoint is below, 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 ma'am. Full screen, yes, ma'am. It is visible, ma'am. Full screen is visible. F5 now, F5 now. Yes, ma'am. Hello, sir. Hello. Ah, yes, ma'am. Everything all right, ma'am. You can continue. But you can uh, continue, uh, ma'am. Only my slides are seen here, sir. Sorry, ma'am. Uh, I am seeing only the PowerPoint only. Yes, ma'am. Your face and PowerPoint is visible for us, ma'am. For me, nothing is seen except the PowerPoint. Yes, ma'am. Sure, sure. Yes, ma'am. To you, it's not visible, ma'am. For only it is visible for parts. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Shall yes, I start, thank sir? You, you can start, or ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Sure, sure. Ma yes. uh, good morning to one and all. Uh, I'm uh, once again. I'm uh, uh, handling the session today. I'm very happy and also I'm uh, uh, very happy to uh, thank all uh, organizers uh, for this uh, uh, online web program. Uh, today I'm going to uh, share some of the ideas in proton NMR spectroscopy. This uh, NMR spectroscopy is on a uh, wide area uh, in that very part of uh, the subject I'm going to handle, uh, especially I'm interested in proton NMR spectroscopy. Outline of my presentation, introduction, macroscopic magnetization, chemical shift, factors affecting chemical shift, coupling constant, uh, continuous wave NMR spectroscopy, and Fourier transform NMR spectra or uh, uh, pulsed NMR technique. So this uh, properties of NMR, this is a very fundamental uh, the NMR active nuclei are having half integral spin values. Uh, for example, uh, H1 carbon 13 F19 or uh, if it is uh, the spin value is a zero, it is on uh, instance where we are, not, we are not recording this NMR spectra for those molecules. So the nuclei uh, with the half integral spin having random orientations in uh, absence of a magnetic field V0. The magnetic field B0 is an important parameter in uh, NMR instrument. Then in the presence of a magnetic field, uh, this uh, nuclear spin with the half integral values uh, having two kinds of orientations. One is this uh, uh, orientation of a nuclear spin uh, aligned with the magnetic field. The another kind is it uh, opposes the magnetic field. So since this uh, I equal to half integral values or uh, NMR active, it is having two different orientations. So one is aligned with the magnetic field, another one is uh, uh, against the magnetic field. There are uh, the orientations, allowed orientations are calculated by using the equation 2i plus 1 where i equal to spin value. If i equal to half integral spin, there are uh, two allowed orientations which are all calculated from this uh, m equal to i i minus 1 and minus i. So when you are sub substituting this uh, half integral value, so here we are having the two orientations labeled as halves and um, m equal to plus half and m equal to minus half. So the nuclei, uh, NMR active nuclei are having definite angular momentum and uh, angular momentum p and magnetic momentum mu. When it, in the presence of a magnetic field, the angular momentum of the nuclei is represented as a P Z. So the P is a calculated from P is directly proportional to H bar and the proportionality constant is M. Where we are substituting this M values, the P is that the values are plus half H bar and minus half H bar, uh, respectively to plus half uh, energy level and minus half energy level. If a spin value is a I, uh, when substituting this uh, spin value in 2i plus 1, we are having three allowed orientations uh, labeled as uh, m equal to 1, my 0, and minus 1. 
having the corresponding angular momentum values are calculated by using this equation uh, mp is that equal to m into h bar so what are the energy of each states each energy states if i equal to half integral spin we are having uh, two energy levels m equal to plus half and m equal to minus half m equal to plus half according to quantum the m equal to plus half is on alpha spin state where m equal to minus half is a beta spin state what is the energies of these two levels the energy is calculated from this equation energy is directly proportional to magnetic field the proportionality constant is minus mu is that so mu is that is a gyromagnetic ratio m into h bar so by substituting this mu is that in this equation we are getting the energy of each state for plus half uh, plus half state the energy is uh, a plus half gyromagnetic ratio into h bar uh, whereas if uh, m in this alpha state the energy is uh, minus a half gyromagnetic ratio into h bar similarly we can calculate uh, this energy of uh, the nuclear spins uh, uh, i equal to 1 and uh, so here uh, this energy difference between the alpha state and the beta state is gyromagnetic ratio h bar into b not the gyromagnetic ratio is very important for uh, recording nmr spectra for proton nmr the value is around uh, 26 radian per tesla per second uh, because uh, whereas in the case of a carbon 13 the value is around uh, 6 only uh, so here uh, depending upon the, the higher gyromagnetic ratio for proton nmr is due to the higher natural abundance of uh, uh, h1 nuclei h1 um, isotope in this nuclei so this abundance is 99.98 percent whereas for carbon 13 it is only one percent so for recording nmr spectrum only minimum amount of sample is recorded for proton nmr whereas for carbon 13 nmr it need higher amount and so here uh, this uh, figure shows the relation between energy and the magnetic field the principles of nmr uh, this is another important parameter that is a larmer frequency in UL, or it is called a precisional fre frequency uh, when a nuclei is uh, placed in a magnetic field it precise around the uh, uh, around the field axis the field axis is a z uh, so here the number of re resolution revolutions or uh, precisions around the uh, z axis per second is called the larmer frequency the energy larmer frequency is a new equal to gyromagnetic ratio by 2 pi into b naught which is derived from this equation the energy of electromagnetic radiation is h nu 1 whereas the energy difference between the alpha states and the beta state is the gyromagnetic ratio h bar into b naught when you are equating these two it leads to uh, give the larmer frequency larmer frequency nu equal to gyromagnetic ratio by 2 pi into b naught then what is the population of energy levels when you are having uh, the energy difference between the two states uh, there, uh, when the population is uh, higher in one state only there may be transition is uh, possible uh, so here uh, this population of each energy levels uh, alpha level and beta statistics uh, equation is uh, given n beta by n alpha equal to e power minus del e divided by Boltzmann constant in the absolute temperature uh, this n alpha represent the number of nuclear spins in alpha state whereas uh, number of nuclear spins in beta state is represented as n beta so by solving this equation uh, uh, here uh, this uh, kb is the Boltzmann constant which is uh, the value is uh, given and uh, t is absolute temperature uh, and B naught is the magnetic field. So here, uh, the del E is a very very small when compared with the uh, uh, Boltzmann constant. Therefore, here this equation becomes n beta equal to zero point five nine zero four in the alpha. That means the populations of each energy levels are nearly equal or almost equal. The excess is only parts per million that is 1 in 10 power 6 uh, so that even this nmr spectra proton nmr spectra is uh, capable of uh, detecting the even the weaker signals 
So here, this is a very important factor that is macroscopic magnetization. Uh, this uh, that is uh, which is important for uh, observing NMR signals because the signal intensity is uh, directly proportional to macroscopic magnetization. Uh, when yes, uh, the nucleus with uh, a spin value i equal to half uh, is placed in a magnetic field. Uh, this uh, I said previously, I have pointed out that the i equal to half means that, that nucleus are having definite angular momentum and the magnet momentum values. Uh, so that only it uh, presides around the field axis. The field axis, NMR field axis, is uh, the field axis with an angle of 54 degree 44 seconds. Uh, so that uh, the nucleus in alpha state and also beta states will uh, uh, spins by following the angle 54 degree 44 seconds so that it forms as a cone here in this alpha state one cone and the beta state one cone uh, the moment of the spin around nuclear spin around the field axis that looks like a double cone since this n alpha is the greater than n beta there is a resultant magnetization that around the field axis that is called macroscopic magnetization since the population difference there is a pop uh, even the population difference is uh, 1 into 10 power 6 in alpha state that is uh, for example one spin is excess in alpha state uh, even that spin uh, having the net uh, resultant magnetization that is represented as m0 m0 is macroscopic magnetization around the uh, the field axis is that so this uh, dark blue color I have shown uh, that is the macroscopic magnetization so now here uh, when uh, B naught is applied uh, for uh, active nuclei I equal to half spin in integral values there is the energy transfer between the alpha state and the beta state that takes place then uh, when the spin returns to the ground state the absorbed energy is emitted and it gives the NMR uh, signal now here uh, when we are recording the nmr spectrum from the spectrum we can uh, uh, extract the two parameters namely chemical shape uh, which is represented as a del unit is the parts per million the another parameter is a coupling constant j uh, unit is a hertz uh, so in order to find out the stereochemical relationship and the configuration of a molecule the coupling constant is uh, very important so here the chemical shift value so this is the basic of which is calculated from this equation del equal to del nu uh, by instrument frequency in the 10 power 6 that is the del nu is uh, resonance frequency of the sample minus the resonance frequency of the reference protons that is a tms protons we can calculate the chemical shift values by using this equation what are all the factors influencing proton chemical shape the proton chemical shifts are uh, uh, affected by means of the inductive effect, steric effect, hybridization, the magnetic and isotropic effect, ring current effect, the temperature, hydrogen bonding, and solvent. So here are the few examples I have shown here uh, to represent this inductive effect. When this uh, electron withdrawing groups are attached, a molecule what have to withdraw electrons from this neighboring protons so the electron density around the proton is less and the proton is said to be de-shielded so here in this uh, chloroform there are uh, three uh, electronegative atom uh, whereas in the methane its chemical shift is 0 0.9 and in the case of chloroform it is a 7.3 this is the uh, because the three chlorine electron powerful electron withdrawing chlorine atoms are attached to that the proton which withdraws electrons around the protons and the uh, proton gets a positive charge that is called the uh, de-shielded uh, now here uh, uh, similarly i have given this um, um, iodomethane bromomethane chloromethane and chloromethane uh, for this uh, methyl fluoride the chemical shift value is uh, 4.2 parts per million whereas for uh, iodomethane it is a uh, 2.2 uh, this is the electron withdrawing power of a fluorine withdraws all the electrons around the protons so that proton is uh, said to be de-shielded here i have given this uh, uh, one electron withdrawing methoxy group, another is the, the electron, uh, sorry, electron releasing methoxy group and the electron withdrawing uh, this um, acetyl group attached to that. Uh, uh, here, uh, this uh, plus I effect, uh, 
donates electron or uh, increases the electron density around these uh, protons. Uh, so these values are de-shielded when compared with that uh, another molecule which is uh, having the electron neutral acetyl group. So now, uh, how the uh, hybridization influences the chemical of a molecule? At that time, so uh, we are taking the common example uh, using uh, then uh, having sp3 hybridization sp2 hybridization ethylene and sp hybridization the observed nmr chemical shift is uh, 1.5 ppm for ethane molecule and for, uh, for here for uh, ethylene it is uh, 4.6 rs for acetylene it is uh, 2.5 uh, ppm uh, so here as the percentage of s character increases it is expected that uh, the del value chemical shift value also increases so according to that, uh, the del value uh, should be in this order, it should be increased uh, uh, for acetylene molecule. Whereas uh, the chemical shift of acetylene lies in between the ethylene and the ethylene derivatives. So by means of uh, hybridization, we cannot explain the absolute trend of uh, 2.5 ppm for acetylene molecule. Therefore, this trend is uh, explained only by means of the so-called magnetic anisotropic effect. So this uh, majorly the chemical shift of organic molecules, the proton chemical shift of organic molecules are explained by means of magnetic anisotropic effect. Whereas the magnetic anisotropic effect for carbon-13 chemical shift is negligible and uh, carbon-13 chemical shifts are explained only by means of uh, this electronegativity effect. This magnetic anisotropy effect, aniso means non-uniform, the electron density around the proton is non-uniform, uh, so which can be explained by means of uh, uh, this uh, orientation, uh, magnetic anisotropic effect and the cone expression and also the uh, mathematical equation, metronal expression. Uh, here I'm taking this um, uh, orientation of uh, this acetylene molecule. When the acetylene molecule is placed in a magnetic field, it, this uh, triple bond orient, linear, it, uh, linearly oriented with that of a magnetic field. The first step. The second one, what happened? In the presence of a magnetic field, there is a circulation of a pi electrons that takes place. As a result of circulation of a pi electrons, the secondary magnetic field is produced that is called induced magnetic field or uh, it may be secondary magnetic field. Now, this induced magnetic field, you see here, uh, the induced magnetic field opposes the direction. Uh, this uh, applied magnetic field so that what happens since the induced magnetic field opposes the applied magnetic field the field felt by the proton is less uh, very low and uh, thereby this uh, protons are resonate at a lower frequency or called it as a shielded by means of a cone's expression uh, since uh, in this uh, magnetic field the nuclear spins uh, follow the angle of a 54 degree 44 seconds so that it forms yeah, the alpha state and the beta state uh, uh, spin moment uh, uh, forms a yeah, double cone here uh, in this in the d uh, theta is the um, uh, theta angle between this uh, observed proton nucleus with the direction of a magnetic moment uh, here you see here this acetylene protons uh, in this uh, positive sign indicate uh, increased shielding zone, whereas this uh, negative uh, symbol indicate uh, reduced shielding zone. Uh, so here in this uh, cone expression, this acetylene protons lies in this uh, uh, increased shielding zone. Therefore, the acetylene protons are shielded. So here uh, this. Uh, uh, Observed acetylene uh, chemical shift to 2.5 ppm is also expressed by means of this McConnell equation. This is on quantitative expression. Uh, here, uh, this um, uh, magnetic anisotropy is uh, directly proportional to 1 minus uh, cos squared theta. Uh, here, this uh, said that this uh, angle theta is an angle between uh, the center of absorbed nucleus and this um, axis of a magnetic moment direction. Now here, when theta, uh, the, here for acetylene molecule, the theta is greater than 54.47. When you are substituting this uh, theta values in this cos square theta, it is a 0 0.65 positive, uh, uh, which indicate uh, the increased shielding. So if theta is, uh, uh, 54.47 degree, 
it is a zero there is no anisotropic effect whereas if theta is less than 54.47 this is negative value is absorbed which shows a decreased shielding effect in the case of acetylene this uh, uh, when substituting uh, theta, this uh, theta angle is greater than 54.7. Therefore, uh, increased shielding is uh, explained by means of uh, this uh, equation. Then magnetic anisotropic effect of ethylene molecule, uh, which uh, uh, this value is uh, higher. Chemical shift values are uh, de-shielded when compared with that acetylene molecule, which also explained by means of this magnetic anisotropic effect. This is the orientation of ethylene molecule in the presence of a magnetic field. A circulation of a pi electron is uh, shown. As a result of circulation of a pi electrons, the secondary magnetic field is uh, produced. The direction of secondary magnetic field is reinforces with uh, applied magnetic field in the case of acetylene the produced uh, induced magnetic field direction opposes the applied magnetic field uh, so there in acetylene molecule the field felt by these uh, protons are low therefore the uh, low del values are shielded whereas uh, here the reinforces so field felt by this ethylene protons are higher and uh, resonate at a high frequency are called de-shielded which is uh, Cone expression here, uh, this uh, uh, ethylene protons uh, lies in this uh, negative region that is a decreased de shielding, so that the protons are uh, de shielded. Uh, then, by McConnell expression, the data is greater than 54.47, uh, so the value is the negative values. Uh, this uh, decreased de shielding that means the protons are de shielded. So here, the magnetic anisotropic effect of aldehydic protons. Uh, so the ethylene, the hybridization is a sp2. Uh, 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 ethylene is a sp2 hybridization. And in the case of uh, aldehyde, also sp2 hybridization. Uh, but the value is 9 ppm in the case of uh, aldehyde. So here, what happened? Uh, uh, when you are keeping this aldehydic molecule in the presence of a magnetic field, circulation of a pi electrons produced a secondary magnetic field which highly reinforces with that uh, uh, applied magnetic field. So the field felt by this aldehydic protons are very high and resonate at a high frequency and it is de-shielded. Uh, so here uh, there is a magn magnetic anisotropic effect of uh, the first one the proton is uh, attached to that electron withdrawing carbonyl group and this uh, proton is uh, have attached to the carbon where having this aromatic nuclei. Uh, so in the case of uh, aromatic uh, uh, the magnetic anisotropic effect in the case of uh, aromatic uh, compounds are very high and compared with that aliphatic compounds. So the de-shielded, highly de-shielded, the aldehydic proton at 9 ppm is explained by means of a cone expression here the aldehydic proton forms in this uh, decreased shielding region the protons are de-shielded now it is uh, also expressed by a uh, mcconnell equation the theta is uh, uh, 54.47 value is negative it is uh, de-shielded so here this is an interesting one uh, when we go for a benzene molecule this uh, having sp2 hybridization in the case of ethylene also sp2 hybridization the benzene molecule uh, value is 7.28 ppm there is in the case of ethylene it is a 4.6 to 5.8 ppm so the highly de-shielded of uh, benzene uh, protons are explained by means of a ring current effect magnetic and isotropic effect which is uh, in benzene this is otherwise called a ring current effect when a molecule benzene molecule is uh, placed in a magnetic field there is a circulation of a pi electrons here in ethylene also there is a circulation of a pi electrons but this uh, pi electrons around the two carbons only whereas in benzene it is around the six carbons so circulation of a pi electrons over a number of carbon atoms produced the secondary magnetic field that secondary magnetic field uh, the strength of secondary magnetic field is very high it is otherwise called the ring current 
so the produced ring current reinforces the applied magnetic field so field felt by this uh, benzene protons are very high resonate at a high frequency or the protons are said to be de-shielded when we are uh, substituting this is the de-shielding of uh, benzene protons are explained by this uh, cone effect the aromatic protons lies in this the negative region or it is a decrease the shielding which is explained by means of uh, meconal equation also uh, by substituting the theta values getting uh, the minus 1.25 it is uh, a decrease the shielding so now this uh, magnetic and if we explain the magnetic and isotropic effect uh, uh, in the case of uh, 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 chemical shift values i have taken the four examples and now this uh, uh, just this uh, coupling is on a broad area uh so just uh, i i want to touch only the uh, definition for coupling uh this uh, scalar coupling coupling is uh, a unit uh, uh, represented by j and the unit is a hertz the simple example here acetate i have taken uh there are uh, three signals are observed one is uh, uh, triplet at uh, 1.29 and uh, uh, also, this is singlet at 2.21 ppm and uh, uh, quartet at 4.13 ppm. Uh, so here, uh, as a common man can say, there are three kinds of uh, protons uh, here. Uh, so we expect the singlets, uh, but here the splitting pattern is observed. So that here the splitting is explained by means of this interaction of uh, two nuclei through paired electrons of the bonds. Uh, so here, how this uh, splitting pattern is explained? That is uh, why here uh, triplets are observed and uh, here quartets observed uh, for this uh, methylene proton. Uh, so here the splitting is uh, depending upon the quartet or uh, uh, triplet uh, shows that there is a nearby protons. Whereas in the case of a 2.21, only singlet is observed, which shows there is no. Uh, a nearby proton uh, here this methylene proton is attached to highly electronegative oxygen therefore it withdraws electrons around the protons so the, the methylene protons are de-shielded um, whereas the second here the methyl protons are uh, resonate at 2.21 ppm uh, attached to uh, the electronegative carbonyl group whereas uh, here this methyl group uh, there are uh, here two methyl groups so one at 2.21 another one is at 1.29 the 1.29 uh, appeared as um, uh, this uh, uh, triplet uh, because of the nearby proton is uh, uh, by using n plus one formula we can calculate uh, on the multiplicity and so now here another example i have taken this uh, chloropropane uh, here the two protons uh, i have taken this uh, ha and hb uh, these uh, protons are um, uh, appeared at uh, 3.68 ppm so here the methylene protons are homotopic protons when we are going for that uh, rotational isomers in newman projection formula we can identify that uh, the ha protons and the hb protons so here also ha protons and the hb protons are homotopic protons so that means the geminal protons the uh, geminal protons means uh, two protons attached to the same carbon uh, are chemically and magnetically equivalent so resonate at the same field only so this way either the proton is a homotopic or enantiotopic or uh, diastereotopic uh, we can uh, by substitution we can explain uh, this one and also this uh, uh, equivalency of ha proton and hp protons are uh, clearly understand by using the neumann projection formula uh, so here this is ch2 proton uh, here also ch2 methylene protons this proton methylene is at 1.61 whereas uh, this proton is at uh, 3.68 because uh, this uh, geminal protons are attached to highly electronegative chlorine the next here uh, this geminal protons uh, uh, is attached to a carbon uh, which is a chiral carbon uh, so that uh, whenever the geminal protons are attached to a chiral carbon the geminal protons are called the diastereotopic protons the diastereotopic protons in nmr spectrum diastereotopic protons are having distinct uh, chemical shape because the environment of ha is uh, differ from hb 
these are not uh, chemically and magnetically equivalent or the environment of HEA is uh, different from the location of uh, HEA is uh, different from HB. Therefore, these two are having two different chemical shapes. So the protons, geminal protons or methylene proton CH2 attached to the chiral carbon are called diastereotopic protons, which are clearly distinguished by means of the proton NMR spectrum. So now here, there are so many factors affecting the coupling constant. Uh, this important one is dihedral angle. The angle between the two different planes uh, is a dihedral angle. Uh, the relationship between the uh, coupling constant and the dihedral angle is explained by means of a car plus equation. So this equation is this one here. Uh, so here the simple uh, 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 relation is uh, shown in graph dihedral angle versus uh, vicinal coupling. Vicinal coupling is the uh, one bond coupling J1, geminal coupling J2, uh, that is two bond coupling. And the three bond coupling is the vicinal coupling. Vicinal coupling uh, or J3 coupling plays the important role to determine the configuration of a molecule or stereochemistry of a molecule. Here in this uh, car plus equation, the two graph I have so the one is a theoretical, the another one is experimental. Theoretical graph is in agreement with this experimental only. So when there is a 90 degree relation, the coupling constant lies, when the two protons are in 90 degree relation, the coupling constant lies uh, 0 to 2 ppm. Whereas if it is at 180 degree, this uh, proton chemical shift is, uh, uh, lies in between 8 to 15 uh, uh, coupling constant. Uh, so here, um, for uh, ethane derivatives, the coupling constant is uh, 7 hertz, which shows that uh, the pro this is some average coupling. In ethane derivative, ethane molecule, you see here, uh, these two protons are in 60 degree relation. Here it is 180 degree relation. If your protons are in 180 degree relation, the coupling constant is large. I said, uh, when it is in 60 degree, the protons, uh, the coupling constant, the C3 coupling, or uh, sorry, J3 coupling is uh, 2 to 5 hertz. Since this is on uh, in ethane, there is no preferred. All the three are equally populating uh, uh, so that the average coupling, J3 uh, is. Uh, J1 plus J2 plus J3 and uh, the population of X1, X2, X3 is equal only for ethane derivatives. The another example I have taken here, there are two chiral centers. So this uh, two chiral centers are dissimilar chiral centers. So this molecule uh, is on uh, erythro form or it may be in uh, trio form. Either it is on erythro or it is on trio. The coupling constant, observed coupling constant is only uh, 11 hertz. Uh, that is, it is, um, uh, this 11 hertz is uh, not uh, in uh, uh, above 12 hertz or it is not on uh, below 6 hertz. It is a J11. So this uh, J equal to 11 hertz. This shows that the major population is uh, this uh, anti-isomer or the two protons are in 180 degree relation with the minor contribution of this gauge form also present in that one. So the absorbed chemical shape of uh, either erythro form or it is a trio form. The absorbed coupling constant is 11 hertz. This 11 hertz, the just a higher uh, coupling constant shows that the more population of anti in this rotational isomer. So now here, uh, the coupling constant, one bond coupling, two bond coupling, and three bond coupling. I said that three bond coupling is the vicinal coupling, and uh, two bond coupling is uh, geminal coupling. Usually, this uh, sign is immaterial. Anyway, here, the one bond coupling and the vicinal coupling is having and, uh, positive values, whereas the geminal coupling is a negative value, which is explained by means of here the simple orientation of electron spin with the nuclear spin. Uh, so here, uh, the HD bond. I have given this. Uh, this is a D. Uh, here, it is a H. Uh, so here the HD in between the bond uh, where the electrons are according to poly exclusion principle the electrons are anti parallel with each other so now uh, the nuclear spin if it is electron spin is anti parallel its uh, orientation of a nuclear spin is uh, anti with respect to this one now you see here here also this is the parallel electron spin uh, whereas the nuclear spin is anti parallel to the top uh, 
electron spin. Now you see here this nuclear spins of these two, this deuterium and this hydrogen is anti-parallel. Therefore, uh, this coupling constant sign is positive. In the case of uh, geminal, the geminal here you see, according to Hans rule, uh, you see CH uh, here CH. Uh, so this electrons of this carbon are parallel with respect to each other. Uh, according to Hans, according to Pauli, the bonding electrons are having anti-parallel orientation. Uh, now here, if it is anti-parallel, the nuclear spin is parallel. Uh, respectively here, uh, this proton with respect to this electron anti-parallel spin, the nuclear spin of a proton is uh, here upward. Now you see here, this nuclear spins of these uh, uh, protons are parallel. Therefore, uh, its value, coupling constant value is uh, uh, negative. Whereas in the case of a vicinal coupling, uh, you see here by uh, following this uh, uh, Pauli's exclusion and uh, uh, Hans rule, the two nuclear spins are having anti-parallel orientation. Therefore, J3 coupling constant is having positive. Now I'm coming to that instrumentation. Uh, so here there are two ways of recording NMR spectrum. One is a continuous wave method. Another one is a pulse method or a Fourier transform method. Up to 1970, only a continuous wave NMR was in practice. After that, the Fourier transform dominated. Uh, so here, this is the uh, simple schematic diagram of uh, uh, NMR spectrometer. In the FT NMR, the cryomagnets are used. Uh, so here, uh, this was uh, constructed by means of both. So up to 1970, this uh, continuous wave was used. Uh, here, uh, the parts are I have shown clearly. Uh, this A is the sample tube, the NMR sample tube, uh, which is having 50 centimeter uh, length and 0 0.5 centimeter diameter, uh, which is uh, placed in between this magnet uh, having 20 centimeter diameter. Um, and the distance between the two magnets are 2 to 3 centimeter. And this the C is the coil around the magnets, and D is the uh, receiver coils, uh, which is uh, very important. And the receiver coil is oriented along uh, Y direction, uh, which is used to detect the NMR signals. And E is the radio frequency transmitter, which it generates the electromagnetic radiation. F is the amplifier, and uh, G and H are oscilloscope and the pen recorder, respectively. So now here uh, in both the instrument, either it is on uh, a continuous wave or it is on uh, FT NMR, the Z is the direction of a magnetic field. And uh, radio frequency transmitter is applied to the sample along X axis, where the receiver coil is oriented along Y axis. So here, this uh, radio frequency transmitter and the receiver coil are placed at the right angles to each other, whereas their axes are perpendicular to the direction of magnetic field. So the transitions are induced in the uh, sample uh, when uh, the resonance condition is uh, satisfied. Uh, I have pointed out that the resonance condition or Larmor frequency is uh, directly proportional to magnetic field. The constant is gyromagnetic ratio by 2 pi. Now here, there are uh, the resonance condition. Once the resonance condition is uh, satisfied, the transitions will be induced and the signals are detected in the receiver coil. So this resonance condition is achieved by two methods. One is the field sweep method. That is the varying magnetic field where frequency is kept constant. Uh, so the transitions are induced. Otherwise, the resonance condition is uh, satisfied by means of a frequency sweep method varying frequency by keeping B0 as constant. So now, in this uh, continuous wave uh, instrument at uh, resonance condition, either by field sweep method or by uh, uh, frequency sweep method, uh, after getting this uh, resonance condition, signal is induced in the receiver coil. And after amplification, uh, it is uh, displayed in the pen recorder or an oscilloscope. In either frequency sweep method, or field sweep method, the spectrum is recorded point by point by varying B0 or, or the frequency. Uh, that is, each proton in a molecule is excited time by time. All the protons or all the carbon nucleus cannot excited at a time or simultaneously. 
so here it is a point by point only the resonance uh, point by point means each kinds of protons are excited point by point by these two methods so here uh, after uh, after getting this uh, uh, signals in this pen recorded the mm -hmm. Uh, intensity is plotted against uh, frequency and the spectrum is called the frequency domain spectrum now here the disadvantage of a continuous wave why we need the ftnr in this uh, continuous wave method is uh, suitable only for sensitive nuclei that means uh, having this uh, um, larger gyromagnetic ratio like a proton h1 f19 and uh, phosphorus 31 there is this insensitive nuclei with low abundance like carbon 13 and very dilute solutions it may not give the accurate results and also since this all the nuclei or the non-equivalent nuclei or excited point by point this is also time consuming also so to overcome all these issues the new spectrometer is developed called the ftnmr or the pulse nmr where the gyromagnets with uh, uh, cryomagnets with uh, high sensitivity can be used in the case of uh, continuous wave method frequency domain spectrum is uh, uh, getting that is intensity is plotted against uh, frequency whereas in pulse the nmr time domain spectrum is uh, observed where intensity is uh, plotted against uh, uh, time now but we need frequency domain spectrum uh, so here the time domain spectrum can be transformed into frequency domain spectrum by means of a Fourier transform technique so this uh, Fourier transform uh, uh, consists of uh, the important to explain the Fourier, Fourier transform in more uh, the uh, following uh, uh, contents uh, pulse, pulse angle, population, uh, free induction decay, interferogram and uh, Fourier transform uh, uh, are important. So here in pulse, what is the pulse? Usually, the radio frequency transmitter usually, usually operates at a frequency new one. When the radio frequency is switched on at a time T0 and switched off at a time T1, the pulse is generated during the pulse duration tau P. So now, what is pulse? Pulse is a continuous band of frequencies, which is symmetrically about the center frequency only. It is a continuous band of frequencies, which is symmetrically about the center frequency. Now here, all the nuclei uh, in, uh, in the sample, either proton or carbon-13, are excited simultaneously by pulse, because the pulse is a continuous band of frequencies. Uh, so here, uh, not all the pulses used for exciting the nuclei, only a part of the frequency band in pulse is effective to induce transitions. That part is equivalent to 1 by tau p. Tau p is the pulse duration. Uh, so here, uh, the pulse duration depends upon the spectrum width. If it is a 10 power minus 1 second, the spectrum width is a 10 hertz. So the another important one is the pulse angle. A pulse angle represented as a theta. So here, the electromagnetic radiation uh, generated from this radio, radio frequency transmitter made up of two components. One is magnetic component, another one is electric component. These two components of electromagnetic radiation operates at right angles to each other. Now here, the role of a magnetic component is very important since our sample is having magnetic property that is uh, by means of uh, due to this magnetic property it uh, spins around the field axis and uh, generates uh, the macroscopic magnetization now here to induce the nmr transition the pulse is applied to the sample the pulse uh, as a result of the spinning uh, the it generates the macroscopic magnetization now here the magnetic component of this electromagnetic 
radiation or pulse interact with macroscopic magnetization of the sample. So the, here, this is a very, very important moment in recording this uh, NMR spectrum of your sample in pulse technique. The magnetic component of the electromagnetic radiation or pulse interact with macroscopic magnetization of the sample. So what happened, this macroscopic magnetization uh, is uh, before the pulse is applied it is in a field axis is that axis once the pulse is applied the magnetic component of the pulse interact with the macroscopic magnetization of the sample so that what happened there is a macroscopic magnetization uh, is uh, tilted away from this is that axis and so here the angle of tilting from the is that axis is called the pulse angle so here, uh, uh, before uh, pulse is applied, uh, the coordinates are uh, represented as x, y, z coordinates. Whereas once a pulse is applied, uh, uh, this uh, macroscopic magnetization is uh, tilted away from that z axis. Uh, now here, the complicated uh, uh, this uh, now this macroscopic magnetization rotates along this x prime x and y planes uh, so that this is the complicated motion uh, so here the fixed coordinates say x y z is not used once the pulse is applied the coordinates are represented as x prime y prime and z so here uh, once it is tilted away from z axis the m z is approaches to zero whereas m x prime and m y prime that is macroscopic magnetization along y axis and the macroscopic magnetization along x axis is growing so that the rotation due to this rotation of this macroscopic magnetization along x prime x and y axis uh, it is represented as instead of using fixed coordinates it is used as x prime y prime and z so now here this pulse angle i said uh, it is directly proportional to pulse duration uh, so which is represented by this equation theta equal to gyromagnetic ratio b a and uh, tau p these are uh, this uh, gyromagnetic ratio of a proton or uh, it corresponds to carbon 13 uh, here this is the uh, amplitude of uh, the magnetic component of the pulse so here in pulse nmr once it is uh, tipped away uh, from this is a taxes the macroscopic magnetization uh, is uh, uh, tilted away from this is a taxes uh, uh, so the angle of tilting is uh, uh, theta uh, now here this gyromagnetic ratio on the ba is a uh, constant and the, the pulse duration is increased in steps of one microsecond and the signal is recorded here the pulse duration i have shown here this uh, signal intensity is uh, maximum uh, at 8 microsecond whereas it is a minimum at uh, 15 to 16 microseconds whereas the negative signal intensity is observed at 21 to 22 microseconds here this um, rotation or a movement of our direction of a macroscopic magnetization i have shown here this is an arbitrary angle theta here when the pulse is 90 degree and the theta this pulse angle is 90 degree the macroscopic magnetization is along y prime so here instead of representing macroscopic magnetization as m naught which is represented as m y prime so the m y prime or when the macroscopic magnetization lies along y prime axis that is called transverse magnetization the transverse magnetization is important for observing nmr signal in this uh, uh, nmr spectrum because the receiver coil is oriented along y-axis so that uh, this transverse magnetization is obtained at 90 degree pulse when it is a zero degree or 180 degree the macroscopic magnetization is in negative axis that is minus z axis so here uh, this is the macroscopic magnetization uh, which is lies along yeah, y-axis represented as m y prime uh, this is called a transverse magnetization the signal intensity is directly proportional to m y prime uh, maximum signal amplitude is observed at 8 microsecond uh, whereas it is 180 degree uh, this is signal 
amplitude is zero uh, at 270 degree the signal amplitude is negative so here the another important factor is a population so before uh, at the, uh, this is I said here the population of uh, n alpha that is the more stable uh, lower energy state uh, which is just uh, 1 into 10 power 6 nuclear spins are higher almost this n alpha is equal to n beta only at 180 degree in the negative signals uh, observed that means the populations of n alpha and n beta is reversed whereas at 190 uh, degree pulse the population of two levels are equal. That is, this situation is differ from saturation. When 90 degree pulse is applied, the macroscopic magnetization lies along y-axis, where the population of two levels are equal. So here, this situation is different from saturation. Saturation means n alpha is equal to n beta, where the macroscopic magnetization lies along z axis only. But here at 90 degree pulse, the macroscopic magnetization lies along y prime axis, where the bunch of spins in, in both the states, alpha and beta states, are equal. So here, uh, this condition is called phase coherence. Uh, because the net magnetization lies along y prime axis at uh, 90 degree pulse where the population in the zeman energy levels alpha and beta is uh, uh, equal that condition is called phase coherence phase coherence is different from saturation at the saturation condition their populations are equal only but net magnetization is along z axis now here once a transverse magnetization is observed, uh, now here we are having this important process in NMR instrument that is a free induction decay. Once transverse magnetization is detected, the pulse is switched off. Uh, so now the transverse magnetization in MY prime is reversed to its equilibrium state. Uh, that is equilibrium state is the z axis. Uh, now here the M is at growing back whereas m x prime and m y prime that is a transverse magnetization approaches a zero once the pulse is switched off there is decay of transverse magnetization that is m y prime is a zero whereas uh, here this is it growing back to m z so here this decay decay of transverse magnetization is uh, uh, takes place during relaxation that is called relaxation this decay is exponential in nature but exponential curve this is this decay is here this decay is not um, exponential curve is not normally observed instead of a decay curve the receiver produced produces a curve like envelope that is like here i have shown here this envelope curve and now here uh, the between the uh, space between these two lines are one by del nu and the decay of a transverse magnetization is called a free induction decay which is in uh, envelope shape and so now here uh, if the sample contains more than one chemically non-equivalent nuclei there is the interference of a transfer there is a different transverse magnetization absorbed the different transverse magnetization are superimposed and the interference between the free induction decay occur and the spectrum observed is interferogram that is if more than one chemically non-equivalent nuclei are uh, present in a molecule different FIDs for each kind of protons the free induction decay occurs uh, so that in the free induction decay in uh, superimposed or interference between the free induction decay occurs and the complicated spectrum envelope shape uh, spectrum is called interferogram this is its uh, frequency uh, finally this for the corresponding interferogram um, uh, for uh, uh, methanol uh, the spectrum frequency domain spectrum is like this you see carbon 13 spectrometers so from this interferogram this is interferogram is on time domain spectrum we cannot analyze the interferogram directly so that uh, we analyzed the interferogram by means of uh, 
Fourier transform only. It is uh, only after free induction decay, we are getting the time domain spectrum only. The time domain spectrum is uh, converted into frequency domain spectrum by means of this mathematical expression called Fourier transform. Uh, here, uh, FW uh, is equal to FT e power i w t in the dk. This is the mathematical expression used in this uh, Fourier transform NMR to analyze the interferogram. So uh, FT is the spectrum in time domain. Uh, this is spectrum in FW is a spectrum in frequency domain. FW is a complex function consists of a real part of the signal and the imaginary part of the signal. The real part of the signal is used to give absorption mode of signal, whereas imaginary part gives a dispersion mode of signal, but we need a spectrum in absorption mode. Therefore, by using the phase correction, that also one mathematical expression, the dispersion components are removed and all the signals absorbed in absorption form. You see here, uh, to get absolute spectrum, uh, this equation is used the square root of real part of the signal and the imaginary part of the signal. So spectrum with the absorption type of signals uh, from real part, no phase differences uh, here. Uh, there will be phase difference between uh, real part and the imaginary part that will be eliminated in the case of absolute spectrum. So the, here I have shown the simple one, absorption mode of signal. This is a dispersion mode of signal. This is the last it is on absolute mode of the signal. So summary here, uh, I have given uh, some introduction about the uh, NMR, uh, macroscopic magnetization, what are all the uh, definition for chemical shaped factors affecting chem chemical shape and uh, some coupling constant, uh, car plus equation. Finally, the instrument part, uh, continuous wave NMR and FT NMR. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So, I hope all the participants uh, enjoy all the entire session. And uh, one of the participant question like this in the comment box. In ethylene molecule, sorry, ethylene. Yes. Sir. Ethylene molecule, why yes. coupling constant is less with 90 degree and more at 180 degree? Partially, like that, he that question. Sir, in ethylene molecule, all protons are uh, chemically equivalent only. There is okay. uh, uh, no substituent. If there is a substituent, there may be. Uh, here in ethylene molecule, uh, either the protons are in gauge form or it is an anti form, it is on the chemically equivalent. Uh, so that only oh, the coupling, average coupling, 7 hertz is absorbed in ethylene molecule. Whereas when we go for ethylene derivatives, the situation is uh, different. I see, I see. Otherwise, uh, all the parts, most of the participants uh, uh, give a very Interesting comments, and I get a very good, uh, excellent, and uh, one of the nice explanation. Yeah, very good uh, comments you have received, ma'am. Uh, now I call upon. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Now we can thank go you. to the water fishing. Now I call upon. Uh, uh, Professor Vangudis, yeah, the leader of uh, Water Science. Thankfulness is the beginning of gratitude. Gratitude is the completion of thankfulness. Thankfulness may consist merely of words. Gratitude is shown in acts. Honorable dignitaries and most valued guests, it's my privilege to propose a vote of thanks on behalf of our esteemed institution. Today we have completed the first part of online lecture in cycle two, organized by the Department of Chemistry in association with IKAC, Dr. R. K. Shanmugam College of Arts and Science, Kalakurichi. We want to express 
we want to express our gratitude to honorable guest dr j jayabharathi professor and the director of cipr who has delivered the lecture on stereo and analytical chemistry it is the most interesting and challenging topic in organic chemistry and also in analytical chemistry this session has been very fruitful and beneficial for all participants so once again thank you ma'am now we want to express my sincere thanks to our chairman dr k magadamudi sir for presiding over the event and motivating and inspiring us at every step our heartfelt heartfelt thanks goes to dr g s kumar correspondent engineer and kovindraj secretary and dr madhivanan academic advisor for always giving your facilitation to us a warm thanks goes to dr g mohan sundar principal and iqac chairman of our institution whose never say die attitude has developed an excellent work culture in our institution we offer our sincere thanks to dr p john victor vice principal and iqac coordinator for the facilitation i would like to thank our hod dr j ahmed sultan convener of this great successful event and also i thank our faculty member department of chemistry for coordinating this event finally i would extend my sincere thanks to all participants for listening with the interest thank you very much who have all assembled here thank you so much thank you sir thank you so much thank you so much Uh, on behalf of Deepam Mohan, thank you all. Thank you all. Very special to thanks to Madam. Thanks to Madam. Ma'am, 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 Ma'